And we're back live from uh, Amsterdam at the ThinksCon 2017 festival. Um, all afternoon live with uh, a guest that have been on stage like uh, Jasmina uh, Tashinovich. Yes. You just gave a talk. Yes. What yeah. was it about? Internet of Women Things. I'm actually one of the founders of Casa Yasmina, which is a smart home for uh, even smarter people. That's how I call it because, you know, I'm not a designer. And uh, I'm not ashamed of not being a designer because I think very often uh, people uh, design things uh, too smart. I don't want my mattress to outsmart me, you know. This is my point. And I did, but I did want, I like, I love technology and I like doing the things. So basically we found it in Torino, you know, uh, this place where I actually lived, you know, and we started from scratch. And uh, this is now a finished project. You know, it's not like it's done or closed, but we finished doing our stuff, you know, there. And uh, in the meantime, uh, while doing it, I realized that there were no women, you know. It, I was surrounded by men. This is Italy, this is technology, you know. I couldn't believe it, you know. So then I had to, <clears throat> you know, I realized that you can't make a home, meaning a place where you are living, Emotionally, it's not, it doesn't have to be beautiful. I mean, it has to be your taste, no? And uh, without women, children, you know, old people, dirt, you know, like normal stuff, you know, your own rubbish, you know, your own things you like. And then I made this uh, movement. I wrote a manifesto, Internet of Women Things, and I spoke about that. I had seven points. And uh, I spoke about that today. In the meantime, the thing became really bigger than me, thanks God, because I'm not a designer. I, I can't do it. I can only think about it, you know? And I'm happy that now we have basically three trends, you know, three ways of Internet of Women things. And one is like, uh, one is this artsy thing that it became, there is a show that was in Eindhoven, uh, the Dutch Design Week, you know, manifestations, and there was, huge and beautiful show of Internet of Women things, which I'm, you know, basically we started doing it a year ago. And then there is this uh, makers movement uh, from Zurich, Electronis, this is the name of the girls, you know, who do it. They do the maker stuff, like the maker movement and the makers culture, which I don't want to explain now, but it's from a woman's point of view. And there is the third part, which is very political, ideological, and uh, there are London-based girls from university, and they wrote a, a, a manifesto of inter feminist manifesto, and they're doing great things uh, there, you know. But basically, we're all connected. We have a site where doing it together and putting our stuff there. We, 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 we don't know each other so physically, but we do. We do understand the points. What's missing in technology mainstream? Right, and, and what is missing is the input of women and other people, uh, other than Yes, men. yes, it's basically, it's a very male, it's a mainstream male-dominated uh, culture, you know, right. because it's a new field, you know, it really is new, and, and it's a field of power and money. You know, internet is a field of power, man. It started as a military thing, you know. And basically, we they call us like uh, users, clients, whatever. But children are not users or clients. They're just people who are growing in the midst of internet, no? And we don't want them to be victims. We don't v want them to be monitored by smart objects just without, you know, or, or controlled or whatever. You call it care, but it's not care, really. It's, it's, so was it hard to find uh, women uh, all over the yes, world to, to join you? Yes, it was hard. It was hard in Italy. It's it's not so hard in other places. You know, I noticed that um, like uh, I travel a lot. I don't even live in one place. I live in many places. But uh, uh, like in my environment, in Italy, it's still hard. You know, because also because it's um, women think differently. You know, and in old fashioned in old societies, they're not only old fashioned societies. They're just old societies. Like Italy has a big tradition you know, of culture, of language, of food, of everything. So it's very hard to change those habits. You know, it's very, like, it's very hard to eat in Italy if you're not eating between one and three, you know. They can't change that. Imagine how it's hard to change something else, you know. So, and women who think differently, they are not allowed to think differently. You would like, you would like, they would be invited to work, you know, with men or wherever, you know, but uh, they would have to think like men in order to be accepted. This is what, you know, like my friend who finished uh, Politecnico di Torino, you know, it's one of the best universities of Politecnico, 
And uh, she, she's an engineer. She's older than me. She said there were three women in her generation, only three. You know, One of them immediately left after first year. The second one was told, look, if you came here just to get a husband, you better find one and leave. And, and she was like, you know, she started crying. And, she, and the third one was her. So this has changed. But it's still like, like there are like 20%. Right. So, so how, how, do you, how do you find these women, and how do you get them enthusiastic uh, uh, to join? You know what? I, first of all, I physically find them. You know, I see them. You grab them. I grab them. Yeah, the first meeting was really literally grabbing them, you know, and making them. Some say, oh, I'm not a feminist. I'm not this. Never mind. You just tell me how do you work, you know. Some are feminists. They, and I grab them physically. And we started like sitting and talking, not agreeing, because the point is that you don't have to agree, you know. And basically, what I wrote, I wrote something they said. It's not because I invented it or made them agree. I just told the problem that like the seven point that I wrote down there contradictory even sometimes, you know, because I call them seven ways of internet of women things. So you can approach it in seven different ways. It's not like one way of doing it. Okay. And then after the first time, and I got really many invitations, you know, I, that was great, you know, because I really love that part of uh, doing um, um, technology, and, and because I, uh, I feel comfortable about it, about, about, I don't feel inadequate, you know, I feel comfortable about explaining my problems with, uh, with technology, because there are problems with technology. You know, it's not like you have to be a designer in order to have problems and realize there are some problems, no? Yes, designs are there so, to solve them. Yeah. So, but but now you have a group of women, uh, um, yeah. and and now, yeah, now you need to change this this uh, male-dominated industry. Uh, uh, um, how, how are you going to do that? I don't know. I mean, I, I I don't have one group of women. I don't even have a group. There are many groups, which are like a consequence of maybe what I did, or maybe I just picked up the ideas and I put them together. You know. And I think, uh, I don't even know who will manage. You know, I hope we do. <laughs> you know, I, I, mean, I can't tell you that. You know, it's just, I mean, this thing is uh, like two years old, you know, only. And uh, I, I, I think we're becoming louder. I mean, the manifesto that I was telling, the feminist manifesto is like three months old. The makers from Zurich, which are doing wonders, they're like two months old, you know. Uh, the show that we did, this show, which like won the first prize also, it is like one year old. You know, so I don't know you if it's going to change something. Yet. Yes, yeah. you know, I'm sure, but I'm sure that uh, girls who think differently, and who are aware that they think different, will be more courageous to express themselves. You see, okay. this so, is enough. But but uh, you only started, uh, uh, so you can expect much results yet. Yeah, but if you, if you take a look at the future, uh, uh, um, how? Do you envision the technology world? How should it be, uh, um, and what would uh, what would be the role of women in it? You see, I don't believe in future. Ah, <laughs> I, be I believe in events. I think time is not measured by um, how to say linearly. I think um, time. I'm, I'm speaking about a little bit about quantum physics. <laughs> it's like measured by really physics and events, and so I really. Think that only changes themselves. Uh, if, if if the change does happen, it would. But I don't know if it's going to happen for good uh, good things or bad things. You know, you um, you have to understand that I come from a broken country, Yugoslavia, and I was there during the wars, and I saw a civilized world collapse. So change can be terrible. I mean, you can have. Uh, I'm not very utopian about internet. This is a bad moment, but you can't go back. It's like not having electricity. But this is a really very important moment that we take the means of reproduction in our hands, because this is the moment when you have the big five, you know, Apple, Google, the big five they're called, you know, Microsoft, they're dominating. This is the post-internet era. This is the Snowden era. And I think women are much more aware of that. Because in all these workshops that we are uh, doing, they were like, the first thing they would say, OK, can we have a space which is not connected, especially at home? Can we have like firewalls? You know? And this is also historically, uh, how to say, uh, normal. Because uh, through history, women were not owners of their bodies. You know, society was controlling women's bodies. They couldn't do anything. They had, you know, they have no rights to vote, to have an abortion. They had children as much as somebody would tell you to have. You know, so they are very much afraid of this control, which can change their life. And also, historically speaking, since I'm one of the pacifists in uh, who like risked her life in Serbia, and and not only me, you know, but there were all women. 
you know. Like women always do the dirty jobs, you know. <laughs> like after the wars, you know, in Berlin, you know, you know the mm -hmm. girl, yeah. the women who collected the rubbish. I don't yeah. know the German word. I won't say it now because I traum something like that. Never mind. It's a word uh, that uh, really literally says women who collect the rubbish. So you destroy something. And then the women come and reassemble it from the rubbish, you know. And I think rubbish is a very important topic. Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. Rubbish so, we produce. Yeah. So uh, um, we're at an IoT conference. Uh, um, IoT is male-dominated as well. Uh, yeah, or, mostly they are. Yeah. You know, this one is a little bit less, but still, I was looking at the audience. It's yeah. 80% men. Right. So but, well, maybe maybe next year you will be back. <laughs> will, will you bring a lot of women? Yeah, well, you know, I, I prefer other women to do it. You know, really, I, I want to do other stuff. You mm -hmm. know, like uh, I, since I'm an activist and a feminist, you know, I do stuff. And when the mainstream picks it up, I do other stuff. You know, sure. I, I don't do mainstream. I go upstream, you know. So like this Me Too movement now that yeah. it's happening. I've been doing it for the past 30 years. I'm so happy that now Hollywood is doing it. You know, if Hollywood does it and... Silicon Valley, I don't have to do it anymore. You move there on. are other issues. There's other issues. Yes. All right. Well, thanks very much for having uh, yeah. for being here. And uh, um, yes, it's a great time. I hope to be uh, to be back next year. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this was another episode at uh, ThinksCon 2017. Uh, thank you for watching. We will be back with some more guests.